All right, guys. So we are so excited. Y'all are here. My name is Chloe and um, I have Ray Ray with me. And we are going to be talking with you guys tonight about becoming a social media master um, in the sense of real content, authentic content to build a true following um, that you enjoy, enjoy um, doing. Um, I'm a firm believer in not uh, gravitating towards necessarily what people want so you don't lose yourself, but really incorporating who you are into your consumers, your customers, whatever you want to call them, your followers. So yeah, I'm super excited. Um, I am going to go ahead and spotlight Ray Ray so she can tell you guys a little bit about herself. Um, I've learned a lot about social media from her. Um, I actually started, please don't print that right now. This is going to be on YouTube. Um, I actually started following Ray Ray a couple years ago um, and following her Instagram and seeing how she was posting and seeing what she was doing. So um, I really want you guys to understand that if you want to grow, and we're going to get into this as we go over our content for you guys, but if you want to grow anything in life, you have to watch people that are doing that thing successfully. And um, yeah, we're going to break down what that means. But I just, I think that's really, really important because I hear a lot of people say all of these things about how they can't do this with social, they can't do that, yet they're literally not, not following the people that you know, are successful in that area and looking at what they're doing and kind of making it their own. So Ray, I'm going to hand it over to you so you can like tell everybody about yourself and all that good stuff. All right. So um, if you guys don't know who I am, my, my real name is actually Rachel um, Spear and it, I plan on changing it to my married name pretty soon um, after I go out of the country and come back. But um, it'll soon be changing to Rachel Anderson, but on social media, you'll see me as Ray Ray. That's what I'm known for now. So I just left it as that. Um, but I've been a consultant for three years. I just hit my three year mark last week, which is amazing. But um, I will say exactly what Chloe just said. I didn't start off knowing everything about social media. Um, and honestly, I don't know everything about social media. I am really good with Instagram, but it's exactly what Chloe said. I watched other people. I watched what they were doing and I implemented into my own business, into my own Instagram account. Um, and the other thing is I literally just click buttons. I play around with it. Um, and if there's something that I see someone else doing and I don't know how to do it, I YouTube it. I Google it. Like Google is your best friend, okay? I don't care what question you have, you Google it, you will find the answer to it. So um, I have probably have my Instagram account for business wise, I would say I really started implementing Scentsy into my Instagram probably two years ago, not even really the first year of my business. Um, and it's grown tremendously. So Instagram is primarily what I use for my business. Facebook is more for like my team. Um, I do have a VIP page, but I will admit it's not as popping as I would like it to be. Um, Instagram is really where I focus all of my energy into. Because if you, if you really think about it, when you're focusing on multiple different platforms, you can't give one platform your all if you're focusing on three, four, or five different platforms. So also take that into account. Um, now, I know nothing about Pinterest other than searching something. So if you are looking for in, information on Pinterest, Twitter, um, I'm sure there's other platforms out there, I'm not the person to ask. Um, Instagram is really like my forte. So that's basically it about me. Chloe, you want to start with um, the facts about social media and why we decided to do this training? Because we both agree that social media is where it's at right now. It's 2020. Everyone in the world has a freaking phone. Like, let's be real. I'm sure that your six-year-old niece probably has your, has a phone. Seven-year-old, eight-year-olds. I see, I see kids as young as six with cell phones. So, and, or if they don't have a cell phone, they have their iPad or whatever you want to call it. And they're navigating YouTube like crazy, probably better than I can navigate YouTube. So social media is where it's at, especially if you want to grow your business. Um, so Chloe, you want to start with the facts that you found? 
Yes, sorry. I want to start, I want to say before that, um, I didn't realize, I did not post this on Anchored Sense because Ray Ray posted it, and now I can't find the link. So if somebody's on it, I'll post it. Thank you guys so much. Um, yeah, so there's that. Um, a lot of people are texting me about that. So anyways, my phone is going away, so if you guys text me, I don't have it. Um, but yeah, let's get into a couple stats. And I think this is really important um, for you guys to understand. Um, so you can really <clears throat> put into perspective how important um, different generations are and things like that and how important social media is right now. And, and honestly, not even like important, but a platform to use that is free. Like Ray Ray said, honestly, it's 2020. So in my opinion, if people are going to say, well, I don't want to use social media because I don't know how, I want you to replace that with, I'm not going to use social media because I'm choosing not to grow my business and, and learn social media. So um, you have a choice. Like Ray Ray said, um, she literally Googles stuff that she does not know the answer to. She said that today about something in our SSD chat that we have. And so um, I am the same way. So some really cool stats that I'm going to share with y'all, and we'll make sure that we post these um, on our pages. But why social, right? Here's some facts. I'm going to read, like, go over them. And Ray, if you want to, like, interject on any, any of these, you totally can. Um, by the way, Ray Ray is, how old are you, 27? I'm about to be 28 this month. Woo -woo. So, by, just so you know, so she's a millennial and I'm a millennial. I'm 30. I just turned 30. Um, and so this is definitely our forte. Um, we both absolutely love doing this kind of stuff with social media. So a couple of facts, guys. So uh, 3.5 million people use social media daily. Like, and honestly, this was from late 2019 because they don't have 2020 stats yet. And I literally can't wait to find the 2020 stats because I guarantee you this number has quadrupled this year. I guarantee you. 68% um, of the population uses Facebook. 68% of the population. So I'm just going to leave that right there. 90.4% um, of millennials use social media. That is me, Ray Ray, anybody who is a millennial, 90% um, of them are using social media. Um, that's really important for y'all to understand because it's not about you not wanting to get better at it. It's you're either going to evolve or die, like in your business. It's, it's just the way the world works and you have to evolve. And it's really funny. Evolve was my word this year and it just, it like went like next level. But like, I, I can't wait to like get into like how me and Ray Ray brand and all that so I can share with y'all what I'm doing. But um, another fact, so baby boomers. So baby boomers were born between 1946 and 1964. Um, they're between the ages of 56 to 74, okay? There's 71 million of them in the U.S. 90% of them have a Facebook, very important. 77.5% um, of Gen Xers use social media. So between 1965 and 1980, so getting, like, getting a little bit um, into the years. Uh, they're between 40 and 55. All right, millennials or Gen Y. So that's me and Ray Ray. Um, hang on, where was I? Um, our greatest consumers are millennials currently. All right, Gen Y or millennials bet born between 1980 and 1994. All right, they're 24 to 39 years old. And um, there are 31 million in the US that are Gen Y1, which are 25 to 29 years old. And there's 42 million Gen Y2, 29 to 39. So that's where I'm at. Ray Ray's Y1, I'm Y2. That's important for you to understand because 31 million and 42 million, that's a lot of people, guys, that are, that are our age right now. So you really have to understand that if you do want your business to grow, especially with what's going on right now in the world, you don't really have a choice but to use social or to really, I mean, I, I just, I don't know, I don't know what else to say about it. It's, it's a great, it's just a great platform. Um, another fact, 54% of consumers shop so, via social media. Guys, I shop right from Instagram. Literally, that's how I shop. Shop now. That's literally where I go to shop. 49% of consumers rely on social media influencers to shop. Let me say this again. This is very important. 49%, almost half of the population on social media, 49% of them rely on social, the influencer, you, on recommendations to buy things. That literally should tell you right there that this platform 
people are looking at, at they're looking at it. Um, they want to hear your opinion. They want to see what you thought of that scent, etc. cetera. Um, Gen Z, this is the most important. You want to know why? These are your next consumers coming up. These are, this is my assistant right now. Um, this is, you know, these, these people that are between the age, they're the newest generation born after 1996. They are the smartest with technology. They're very tech savvy. Um, they're very quick. Uh, they're very, uh, they get very bored e very easily. They don't want to read a lot. Okay. And I know this cause I've literally been interviewing my assistant who is, um, who is a Gen Z because I'm picking her brain to see what kind of content she would watch if she saw it on Instagram. And I think it would, it's going to blow your mind tonight when you hear the stuff that actually matters to them. They don't give a damn about your story. They want to hear what's in it for them. So fun fact, they don't care how since he's changed your life, they want to know how it can change theirs. They care about money. They care about efficiency. So very important for y'all to understand the next market of consumers, because if you don't tune into social media and, and get on this and learn about it, when this next market comes up, you're not going to know how to train them to sell on social media because these people are not going to be doing home parties. Literally, I'm going to be really honest. This next generation, they're not, they may not party at all. They're not going to need to because they're going to be able to do it on social media. I haven't had a party in eight months. My PRV has been between eight to $10,000 the past eight months. I haven't done one party, all right? Because I'm learning about this generation literally this year. Um, they are 32% of the population, guys. They're a third of the population. Um, by 2020, Gen Z will make up 40% of all US consumers. Let me say this again. What year is it? 2020, Gen Z makes up 40% of consumers. 40% of the people you're selling to right now were born after 1966. And if you're not selling to them yet, they're the next market coming up. All right. Gen Z influences $600 billion in family spending. Guys, these kids are influencing what like their parents buy them. It is insane. And I can tell you, I've been studying this and um, it really is pretty accurate. 50% of Gen Zers are connected to the internet for 10 or more hours a day. Like, I don't think that's healthy, but these are facts. So 50% of Gen Zers are on the internet, on their smartphones, 10 hours a day. But, you're, but you guys don't want to learn how to use social media to do social selling. Well, your consumers are on social media. They don't care about door to door. They don't want you to come over. They, they, don't, they don't care about that stuff. They don't care about that stuff. They want to see your review. They want to see that review on social. Um, and then a couple other facts. And I know some people may not be facts people, but I think it's really important. And I was telling Ray this when we were creating this content, like we want you guys to understand that this is real information and it, social media can really, really elevate your business. Um, but a couple more facts about them. Um, Gen Z, so 1996 and after, Gen C, Z consumers are two times more likely to shop mobile than millennials. So they're more mobile than me in Ray Ray, which is insane. They don't want, they, they don't want to go on a laptop. They don't, they literally want to go to Instagram. I'm going to tell you right now, they want to go to Instagram and they want to go to your bio. That is literally what they're doing. I made video content today with them. I said, what should I put on this warmer? Like I was using the, um, oh my gosh, I can't even think of it, the warmer that we put like letters on. And I was like, what should I put on here? And they're like, Lincoln bio. And I'm like, really? I was like, oh, interesting. Um, and then they also said I should put make money, honey. So those were the two things that they told me to put. They're 20 years old. And I want you guys to pay attention to that. It's very important. Um, they don't care. They don't care about like, they, they just don't care about the, the riffraff. Tell them what's in it for them. Make it quick you're gonna waste their time. If it's more than 15 seconds, they're out. They also told me, yeah, so there's that. I made 15 second videos today, which is very difficult. Um, Instagram and YouTube are the most popular social media platforms for Gen Z. What have I been working on this year? Instagram and YouTube, end of story. 67% of Gen Zers do most of their shopping in physical stores, which was interesting because a couple, th a couple um, facts before that, it said that Gen Zers are two times more likely to shop mobile than millennials, but that 67% do like to go in stores. 
So it is that that was the data that was very uh, interesting to me. So I'm actually going to like pick people's brains <laughs> that I know that are this age to find out more. But I do believe that they love they they do want to be quick and they do want to shop online, but they also do like touching things and like seeing products and things like that. Um, so anyways, we're going to get right into this. Um, Ray Ray, do you want to start off? You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Roll. So Chloe and I were both, we are both obsessed with Instagram. Okay, I'm sure you guys can see that if you follow us. Um, so one of the things we're gonna, well, we're primarily gonna talk about Instagram, but one of the things was we wanted to share with you why we choose Instagram why Instagram is the platform we choose. For one, it's free. I think Chloe already said that. It's free, guys. You don't even have to pay anything. Like you literally download the app for free and there you go, okay? You just opened yourself, your business to an entire world of people you don't even know, but you have the opportunity to connect with. So it's free. Um, it's easy to use. It is simple. It is super simple. And it's, it's a visual platform, okay? I think that's what the world is moving to is visual. Just like Chloe said, they don't want to read. I don't want to read. I'm going to be honest. I do not want to read. If you send me a message that is this long, I can promise you I'm going to read the first message. Unless I'm pissed off, I might read it, okay? If it's a heated argument. But if it's like a random message I get, I'm going to read the first line. And if I'm not, if my attention's not caught, skip delete, bye-bye, on to the next one. Same thing with your captions and everything, okay? It needs to be straight to the point. If you want to write a lengthy caption, fine, but the first sentence needs to capture that person's attention so it draws them in to want to read more, okay? Um, so the reason why we like it, it's a visual platform, meaning your brain, guys, your brain, it is telling you what you like when you're scrolling, okay? Have you ever noticed we just like mindlessly scroll and then all of a sudden we'll pass something, but our brain just saw it, so we'll scroll back because something about that photo brought us back to that picture, to that post, to whatever it was that you just scrolled past, okay? So think about it like that. Um, it's easy to read, but it's also a place where you can show the messy parts of your life where you can be authentic and you can be real and you can show who you are, right? Because none of us are, none of us are perfect all the time. None of us, okay? We all have days where we wake up out of bed and we're like, what am I even doing with my life, right? We all question ourselves at, at times. And then we have days where we wake up and we're like, yeah, I'm a badass, right? jump out of bed, have our entire day together, and we're like, yeah, nothing can touch me. I'm on top of the world. That's fine. But not every day is like that. And that's what you need to show your people who are following you, your followers, the people who are following you. They are following you for a reason, okay? So Instagram is where it's at, honestly. It's quick. It's easy. There's not many distractions. Um, unlike Facebook, I feel like Facebook has a ton of different distractions. I, I'm not a fan of Facebook. Um, I primarily use it for my team pages and my customer pages, and that's it. Um, obviously, you can do what you want, but I really do feel like Facebook limits you. Um, you can only have a certain amount of friends. Um, yeah, I'm just not a fan of Facebook. So, it is simple. Um, the app, if you guys didn't know, Instagram, the app only allows 2,200 characters for your post. You think about it, that's actually pretty short compared to what you can write on Facebook, okay? So it's short, quick and easy, um, and it's more intimate. So if you think about it, when you're on Facebook, how many mass tags do you get from people who might be your Facebook friend, but you don't even know them? Did you know that on Instagram, when you go to your store, you can only tag 30 people max? So it's super intimate, meaning that you have a better opportunity to build that one-on-one -on -one connection with that person, okay? Um, Chloe, you wanna talk about customer focus on Instagram? 
Yeah, so, and that was so good. And if y'all have questions, let us know. We're gonna hopefully try and save them to the end to answer your questions so we can answer them all at one time. So try and hold off if you have a question because it's really hard for us to stop and look. So just keep that in mind though. We're gonna, we're gonna answer any questions you have. So yeah, everything, uh, by the way, about why Ray Ray chooses um, Instagram as her sole platform is very similar to me. I'm gonna be honest. Um, Facebook overwhelms the hell out of me. Um, I am on hundreds of pages, uh, just for Cincy, hundreds and hundreds of pages. Um, I have all notifications off. I don't even use Facebook Messenger anymore because it became so, it, it, it was just insane when they started messaging you on Facebook with story content, which I thought was is ridiculous. Um, and it got really overwhelming. Um, and so for me, my favorite thing, like Ray Ray said, about Instagram is not only is it easy, but it's very visual focused. I'm a visual person. I don't want to get on Facebook and see 5 million things. It's distracting. And for the consumer, it's distracting. I want the least amount of distractions so they can see that my story content is positive up to the top right and um you know we'll talk about why it does that and all that stuff but i i just love the fact that instagram is very simple it's very to the point um and guys as long as you click the buttons in your in your story and stuff you're going to figure out what they mean but i just really love that it's super simple consumer focused a lot of people are shopping on instagram um, and we're going to obviously talk about like how we have our grid and why we do it the way we do it and why we have our bio the way we have it and why we have a link tree and all this stuff. But it's just, to me, it's very simple, right? And um, yeah, Facebook, it, it can just get really honestly overwhelming, especially at, it may not, Facebook may not be overwhelming for you yet, but as you grow your business and see that there's so many distractions on Facebook, it just becomes a time waster sometimes. I'm going to be really honest. Um, and with Instagram, it's a lot quicker for me to, you know, go to my DMs and see, like, check my messages, the ones I want to check, um, show my customers and my story, how I'm, you know, using products and stuff. I don't even have a VIP page. I'll talk about that. When we talk about our tips, I don't I actually use Instagram stories for my VIPs, which sounds so crazy, but I really don't care because that's what I started doing this year and my sales have went up by 5,000 a month. Um, they, my customers love it. So I'll dive into that later. But as far as um, too, with customer focuses, um, I think it's really important with the customer that you are showing them what you have to offer. Um, you're not just throwing a corporate photo in your story. Um, I love sharing those with you guys on team pages. And I know a lot of y'all share corporate images, right? Like the buddies and things like that, because you don't have an image yet. But why don't you go in your story first and talk to the consumer about what in the hell you're about to show them before you throw Cincy Buddy pictures on your story, okay? There's a reason that I have not even shared the buddy photos. You know why? All of my customers are seeing it from every other Cincy consultant in the world, so I can't market it that way. Does that make sense? You have to think, how can I stand out to the consumer? How can I show them what I have to offer? Sales, joining, LTOs, et cetera. And that's what you can do with your grid and your story. Now, we're gonna talk about grid and uh, story content. Your grid is for the most important story you're trying to tell. Your story is your everyday life. <clears throat> your grid is like the key things. Now, if you go back on my grid years ago, it's it's not okay. It was It was just, I just didn't have a focus of really the story I was trying to tell. And I want you guys to know, Instagram, you're telling your story. Your grid is your story, right? Um, they're the most treasured photos that you have. And I want you guys to start, start thinking like that. Um, and also consumers, the reason I also love Instagram is because consumers want one-click shopping. This is so important, guys. My, hu my husband owns a marketing business. These are, this is real stats. They don't want to click a million links. I'm really shocked that Linktree has worked. Justin didn't think that it would be good because there's two clicks. But honestly, the reason I do love Linktree and me and Ray will get into that tonight is because it allows the consumer to go into your bio for multiple things because you can't have multiple URLs. You can only have one. 
So don't think, okay, Chloe said one click shopping, but Linktree you're clicking and then you're choosing to shop. Yeah, but for the consumer, when you're telling them in the bio to look for Scentsy Club or to join or whatever, if you, you need to be able to tell them your link is in your bio. And do you really wanna be swapping out your link in your bio eight times a day? Absolutely not, that literally makes no sense. So the consumer, you need to make it as easy as possible for the consumer, AKA the customer to shop. And that is what I love about Instagram. You can make it really simple. The link in bio is a thing. Thing, um, especially with the next generation coming up, they want to know, okay, link in bio, where is it? Bio in your Facebook, bio on your Instagram. Um, that one click shopping is key. And um, also um, with your consumer, like your story and me and Ray Ray, like I cannot wait for us to dive into like our brains on story content. But guys, your, like, your story is so important to the consumer because they're not buying Scentsy they're buying into you and Scentsy is what you sell. If I sold mops, I could get people to buy them at this point. Does that make sense? They're buying into you, right? They're joining you. They could join under anybody. They could buy under anybody. Why are you special? I don't care if it's your mom or your aunt or your sister. It doesn't matter. I don't care if you went to high school with them. The consumer is going to buy from the person that's consistent and all these other things we're going to talk about, they're not, you know, so I think we also have to get real and we have to get um, to the point of understanding that everything that we're going to train on tonight, if you embrace it, if you use it, me and Justin were just talking about this yesterday. One of my SSDs was down and we were talking about like systems and coaching and stuff. And we were talking about how the biggest problem isn't you guys having the information. The problem is you're not doing anything with it. You're doing nothing with it. So if, if, if I can give you one tip, if you know that you're not going to incorporate anything that we're going to train on tonight, get off the call and go eat some dinner and go to bed. And I say that out of love, but I want you guys to understand that like we've got to start moving in the direction of, of where we want to be. And we actually got to start doing things. So many people, I watch a lot of my leaders on social media. I watch the ones that are not, you know, and, and everybody sells differently. Some people may not be into social. So understand that's fine. But you know, when I, I mean, I can see everybody's numbers, you know what I mean? So if I'm pulling a star director or director or somebody, I'm like, gosh, they have, why do they have 80 PRV? And I go to their story and I go to their grid and I, I'm like, are they alive? They haven't shared in weeks. They haven't, you know what I mean? And like the first thing, by the way, I go to is your story. I don't go to your grid. I can count on my hand how many times I've been to somebody's grid unless I go to shop. And that's really important for you to understand. Um, so anyways, Ray, let's, let's move on. We're going to talk about our top 10 tips. Do you have customer focuses to add first? Any yes, questions? hashtags. Thank you. Um, hashtags are really big. Um, if you are looking for something in particular, you can actually follow a hashtag and okay. So for example, if you go to your Instagram and follow a hashtag, let's say that I posted something and we're not friends, but I posted something and I said, hashtag girl boss. If you follow the hashtag girl boss, I will pop up on your feed. So I follow a ton of different hashtags, but random people who hashtag that will pop up on my feed and that is how I build connections. So hashtags are huge. You don't have to put them in your actual caption. You can put them at, you can comment them on your own post after you post it, okay? But you also have to look at what hashtags are trending, okay? You can't just make up your own, own hashtag like hashtag whatever it'll tell you how many hashtags are out there it'll tell you 1.2 million it'll tell you 10,000 it'll tell you if a hashtag has two okay so you have to be intentional with what hashtags are trending at that time okay so hashtags are going to open up the door for you to get yourself out there because I promise you other people are hashtagging since I started hashtagging I have met so many new people and I've also followed new people who I relate with. I like what their feed, I like what their feed or they're posting on their feed. I like what they're posting in their stories. I connect with those people. So hashtags are super important. Um, but the bottom line of why me and Chloe are so passionate about Instagram is because that is the way to connect with new souls. People in other countries you can connect with. 
You can connect with people all over the United States, people you didn't even know existed, okay? So that is why we were preaching social media, social media, social media. And you have to work at it. You're not going to be an expert the first day you start posting on social media. You learn as you go. You learn as you follow people. You learn as you watch other people do things on their story. Guys, do you know what a reel is? That's pretty new. A reel is pretty new on Instagram. It's almost like TikTok, but it's on Instagram now. Those are huge right now. If you haven't gone to your reels page, those are huge. It's exactly what Chloe said. They are short little video clips that give you information right then and right there. If you don't like it, you scroll to the next reel. That's what people are watching. So if you don't have an Instagram, you need one. That's that's my tip. And if you do have an Instagram, please take it off private. Please take it off private. You are doing nothing for your business if it is on private. If it's on private, you can't make those connections that we're talking about. If this is this is my question, you know, I've always I I hear people say, "Well, I don't want my whole life out to the world." Okay, well then you don't need social media, period. Okay? If you don't want other people knowing things, then you don't need to have social media. I'm just going to put that out there. So take it off private. If you get weird messages from people, delete them. Guys, I get weird messages from people all the time. Just delete them. Don't respond. Delete them. It's fine. I'm sure you've gotten a weird comment from someone in the grocery store. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. So. Let me, I just want to interject. Like, y'all, we've been telling you to make the, your Instagram public for the entire year. Now, listen, I get some people may be in jobs where they can't do it, whatever. That's fine. You're going to have to figure out another way to grow your network then. I don't have a solution for you. But what I am saying is like with Ray Ray talking about making it, making it public, like this is so important for the consumer. Um, I don't understand. Like, are you waiting for them to be your friend? And are you going to tell them to follow? Like, are you going to follow them? And then they follow you? Like, I, I can't understand how that is efficient for a business at all. So I just had to throw in there, Ray. I agree a million percent about making it public. It's so smart. Yeah. And, you know, this is what I want you guys to think about, okay? This would be like Target opening as a brand new business, right? Target's a fresh business. You know, they ended up being... Uh, we'll, we'll just say a small business down the street, okay? We'll just use Target, whatever. We're going to go back to Target. Target opens, okay? It's a brand new business. That would be like them locking the doors to certain people and not allowing them inside, but expecting their business to boom, but the doors are locked and only certain people can get in. That's what it's like to run a business on a private social media account. You are limiting not only yourself, but your business, because you're trying to sell yourself, right? Chloe already said it. They're not necessarily buying Scentsy. Guys, how many people are up here? There are 274 people watching this training. My customers could easily go to any one of you to order. Your customers could come to me to order, okay? We all have the same product. Why should they buy from you? And that's what you're going to portray through your social media account, through your Instagram account. Okay? And if you are trying to push that out there and show people what you have and why they should buy it, how are you going to do that on a private account? Yeah. Are you gonna a private account? Yeah. I mean, I really have um, tips for you guys too. Yeah. I cannot wait to share our tips because that's where we're going to like go in. Do you want me to go first? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I am like so excited, um, to really share these tips with you guys. Thank God my anxiety is down. So I don't know who prayed for me on here, but thank you <laughs> or somebody who felt bad for me, but I'm feel I feel a lot better. Um, so let's, let's talk about, uh, how to really build a massively huge, real authentic following. Okay. Um, I am so passionate about this because I'm passionate about people and I'm passionate about stories and not, I'm not talking about like Instagram story. It just happens to be called a story, but I'm passionate about like looking into people's actual worlds. 
um, looking at people's lives. Um, for my friends and my family, I don't check Facebook guys for that. I look at stories. It's 24 hours. That's the most recent content you're going to find on your friends and your family and your customer before you text them to follow up with them. Okay, these are all things that are relevant and that are important. And I see a lot of people are commenting about um, making their profile public versus private guys. It's look, I'm going to be honest, it's a personal choice. But if you want to grow your business, it needs to be public. I, I don't know, like, I want you guys to go on any any uh, designer celebrity, not even just celebrity, but I mean, anybody who runs, go on, go on Gucci, go on any of these Instagrams, guys, it's, it's public. Why in the world would it, would it be private? It, they can't shop. So it's like, they can't shop from you unless you happen to like know to find them. Do you get what I'm saying? There's not a lot of, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, and I also saw lot, some people were saying they have separate pages. Now, look, I'm going to be the one who's going to go against all stigma and I'm going to say it is not necessary to have uh, uh, your page and then a Cincy page. I don't believe in that. I think you should integrate both of them because Cincy fits into your life. And I will, I, I'm not gonna have two pages. I'm just not gonna do it. Now, uh, other businesses I have have separate Instagrams. Um, I have a marketing business and a uh, cafe. So yeah, those are separate Instagrams, but my my store like my Scentsy customers, I don't want them to just see Scentsy, and we're gonna dig into this a lot tonight on the content that you should be sharing with your audience, um, and being brave and embracing who you are. Um, I love how Ray Ray, Ray, Ray was saying, um, and I'm so sorry all about my emails. We're gonna act like can't hear him, but um, Ray Ray was saying that um, a lot of people. I literally just lost my train of thought. This is where I've been at today. Anyways, it'll come back, but let's go ahead and just talk about the top 10 tips that I have for you guys for growing your Instagram. Okay. Number one, you need to be real and authentic in the content that you are sharing with your consumers. Guys, people can see fake. They can see fake. They may not see it the first time, but eventually they're going to see that it's not real. Oh, this is what I was going to say. So in the beginning um, of this training, Ray Ray was talking about how some days you're going to just wake up and take over the world and other days you're just going to feel like not doing that. And today was definitely one of those days for me. Like, I don't even want to get into it, but I showed up, I got up, I worked out. I pushed through, I did the things that I needed to do. And then in my story, instead of showing a bunch of damn Scentsy warmers, I just shared with them how I felt on the way to my office and was just honest with them about depression and anxiety. That's a part of my story. And if people don't like it, I don't care. They don't have to follow me, you know? And um, it was really crazy, guys. I was getting texts from customers, literally customers, it's important. Like because they're following my story and they like, it didn't have anything to do with Cincy, right? And I think that's important to understand, like your customers wanna see the real. We live in a world where people are sick and tired of gray area and they wanna see what is real, what is real and what is not real. And I think it's important to the, the people you're hanging around, you're a product of the five people you hang around. Um, and I have struggled with this my whole life because I'm a giver. And so a lot of relationships I've been into, I was always the one doing everything and not getting anything back. And that drains your authenticity, that drains your realness, right? That becomes somewhat fake. And so this year I really got back who Chloe was. And I have been so just authentic and raw and real in my content. Um, I really want to encourage you guys to, um, we will share different Instagrams that we recommend to follow, but guys, I, I like, I'm not even being biased, but just follow me and Ray Ray and look at what we do. We're very consistent in our Instagram and in being authentic. Um, your customers are really good at distinguishing, um, what is real content and what, and what is not right. So that's like, if you're going to go in your story and you're going to talk about a diffuser, you better have that diffuser right there. I don't want you talking about a diffuser with Cincy that you've never bought before, or dear God, stop going live in your stories with target diffusers and warmers that aren't Cincy and products that aren't Cincy. I, I don't even know. I don't care if you love doTERRA and young living. I love both of them, but I'm not posting that in my story. Okay. You're cons you create, cons and let me just go off of that and say, if you are doing more than one business, because you're a consultant hopper and you hop to different companies, it's fine. We have a lot of them in our group. But if you think that you can just go ahead and decide and like share different businesses all the time, and now you're doing this, and now you're doing this, and this and that, your customers are not going to want to buy from you because you're creating consumer confusion. 
Um, and that happens when you're doing other businesses and that happens when you're using non sensi products. And I, I literally, I, I don't know what else to say about that, but you're a Sensi consultant and you should not be sharing in your stories products from, that are not Sensi. Like honestly, when it comes to warmers, diffusers, fragrance, fragrance, period. Um, so uh, being real and authentic. Number two, show up every single day in your story. I don't post on my grid every day. And I know, again, I'm going to go against popular belief, right? Some people say, oh, one post a day. Why? I want them waiting and wanting to know what is she going to post next? What is it going to be? Is it going to be a quote? Is it going to be your kids? Is it going to be motivational? Is it going to be um, a product? I don't post products in my grid a lot. People don't want to see products all the time like that. Um, and if you're consistent in your stories, which the consumer, and I'm, I know that Ray Ray will elaborate on this, like they are looking at your story to see if they want to look at your grid. It's like an interview. They're looking at your story to see, okay, does she have any value to add to, to my life? any value so you know when you're when i say show up we're going to move to number three and i have give your customers story content for your business and then also content that doesn't have anything to do with your business this is very important so when it comes to story content for your business which is this is number three i'm talking about unboxing products i'm talking about showing them how to use products tips tricks all of that. I had a VIP page because that's what people did. I was done with that this year. I didn't need it. I, I Facebook already gives me mad anxiety um, because I manage a lot of pages on there and I wasn't serving my customers well. So you know what I did this year back in like February, I was like, you know what? I would tell my customers on follow-up. I started saying, Hey, look, I know this sounds crazy, but Instagram stories is where I show tips, tricks, new products, release drops, all of that stuff. Guys, because you can't send emails for all that. And listen, you can think you can text your customers about LTOs, but you're going to get to a point where you have so many customers. I, it's, it's literally impossible for me to do that, by the way, at this point. I can't text customers for LTOs and all that kind of stuff. I have a VIP email list that I'll send important emails to, but they're mostly for giveaways. I don't send an email to be like, oh, all these LTOs are going to drop tomorrow. It's very rare I'll do that unless um, they, I know like, okay, I really didn't share this well in my story. I need to share the NHL or whatever. Um, but I think it's really, really important for y'all to um, make sure in samples. When you're making samples, guys, your customers love it. I know Ray Ray can relate. Guys, I get orders whenever I'm showing samples. Um, today, I was showing Cincy Club mail out. All right, literally just in my story, real quick. Two customers texted me after that, one customer ordered. I didn't sell anything. What experience are you giving them? Why should they order from you? When's the last time you've sampled something to them? When's the last time you've, you know what I mean? Like actually been invested, right? To me, like with Instagram, you have to invest the time to give your consumers the kind of content you would want. It's very simple. It's very, you need to think about it like that. How would I want to hear about the join opportunity? Do I want to see a bunch of flyers? Quit using the join flyers in your stories. Please stop. Just, just go live. Go, like, just go live. Do like, let them see your face because these people are sick and tired of seeing the same thing, right? This is like, let's talk about faceless logos for a minute. I know y'all all, all got them, that's fine. But the second I got this, this year, do you want to know why Ray Ray was one of the only different people with her faceless logo? She doesn't even know that I'm going to say this. She took that faceless logo and incorporated a part of her brand in her life, which were her dogs. She took it a step further. She was different. And what happens when everybody does this is it no longer is special. It's not unique. And what I want you guys to get out of tonight is that you have a story to tell, you matter. You don't have to have the best content. You don't have to have any content, but you have to start being real and investing the time to share your story and to not just share Sensi, okay? But sharing other stuff as well about your life. Um, so the fourth tip I'm gonna give you guys, so I'm gonna give you the download really quick on my Instagram and how I run it right now. And it's obviously a work in progress. I actually am focusing too on YouTube and on 
Um, really, I'm actually going to get rid of thumbnails. I did not know, by the way, Ray Ray, you may not know this, thumbnails with the words, that's actually not consumer friendly. They want to see a face on a thumbnail. You didn't know that, did you? I found out that today from a YouTube, a big YouTube guy that I was chatting with. And uh, it's like, we don't realize these things actually matter with your face and visually, but it does. Pe pe like Ray Ray said, I mean, me and Ray Ray are very similar. We're not readers like that. If you better capture my attention in 15 seconds and it better be real. Both of those things, capture my attention and be real. If I can tell you're fake, which I can, I'm pretty good at distinguishing that, I will probably unfollow you very quick. I don't have time for it. And I don't want that energy up in my space. And so I want you guys to think about that when you're creating your content. Now, um, I have a link tree, okay? L-I-N-K-T-R-E-E. -E. If you do not have a link tree, you need to get one right now for Instagram. For, I mean, it's a link, so put it on Instagram, Facebook. Um, I have it on the back of my car on a QR code, okay? What is link tree? Well, when you go to link tree, you're going to see um, that um, pretty much it is a a link that trees out different links. So you click link tree and I really wish I would have screenshotted my grid. I don't know why we didn't do that, Ray Ray. Um, but if you want to screenshot your grid, Ray, or when you go, you know what I'm saying? Just email it to me so you can at least pull your grid up, you know, and kind of show them what you're talking about. You know what I mean? So they can see some of your stuff. Um, yeah. But with link tree, it's free. If you go to my link tree, you can now do custom backgrounds. So I did a custom background. I put some bars on there. Guys, you can put your logo on there. Um, so I love link tree. And it's very, what I really love about link tree, you guys, is um, besides the fact that it's free, is that when you're in your story, you're able to direct the consumer exactly where to go, right? You're talking about the joint opportunity. You can say link in my bio and they click that link tree. So if you guys don't know what we're talking about, go ahead and make sure you go to um, my link tree tonight and Ray Ray's. You can click ours and see what we have. Um, we change ours depending on what we want at the top. It really varies for me. I kind of move mine around a lot. I don't know what Ray Ray does. She can talk about that. But I really play around with what the consu consumer wants to see and what they're clicking. You can also see what they clicked on. You can see clicks. So you can see, okay, I may need to move that. Um, if you go to my uh, link tree, I believe that this is accurate as of right now. I don't have join at the very top. Um, and I, and I don't have that, I don't have that at the very top for several reasons, but the first thing is it's, it's very, uh, with the new generation coming up, it's too pushy for them. They don't like that. Um, they want it to be their idea. So, um, I actually have moved that and that's not the first thing on my link tree. So the second thing I have on my Instagram is highlights. Guys, if you do not have highlights, you need to do that immediately. Okay. So you're in your story. I believe it's the three dots in the bottom. Yep. Bottom right. Click the three dots. You're going to click create highlight. If you don't have one, what does that mean? Go to me and Ray Ray's highlights and you're going to figure it out, baby. Okay. We have select content and certain highlights that reflect everything in our brand. So what are my highlights? I have my kids. I have a daughter and I have a son. Um, uh, my business, my Scentsy business, the joint opportunity, my fall favorites. Guys, I want my customers to be at, like, if they want to know what my favorites are, I was tired of typing out a list. I don't have time to do that for my customers at this point. So now I can tell my customers, oh my gosh, click here. I can send them the link to my highlight or say, oh my gosh, look at my highlight. Um, I have two right now because you can only do 100 photos of highlight. Um, but I can tell them my fall favorites are in that fall highlight. Okay. So um, I also have home decor. I'm doing a renovation right now. That's, I love decor. I love design. That's important to me. That's a highlight. Um, gym, being fit, like getting, getting physically and mentally, um, I'm actually about to uh, create a mental health one because um, that's a huge part of my story that a lot of people literally don't understand. They think I'm a machine and I'm a normal person just like everybody else. I just have massive anxiety and I don't share that a lot. And I want my consumers out there because this year anxiety, depression, suicide is the highest it's ever been. I'm like, okay, I've got to share this more because the feedback I got today, not that I don't care about feedback in that manner, by the way, like I'm not just saying, oh, I'm going to create a highlight on anxiety to get more followers. And I want you to understand that. Um, but like, that's a part of my story. And that's, a, that's like, it's time for me to start sharing that more because I know it can impact people in a positive way. So when you, what I want to say is when you think of your highlights, I want you to pick out five important things about your brand. And I know Ray Ray will probably dig into this because we were doing 
um, a marketing class earlier this year and um, they talked about like picking out five key things that you want to literally rotate in your in your story um, and I don't rotate like weird like that I don't do certain things on certain days I don't do wax Wednesday I don't do all that you know why because my life isn't picture perfect and like that's just not how I roll but what I do is rotate. I mean, my kids live with me, so that's inevitable. Like I'm going to share them. Um, you know, I'm doing a renovation, like, you know, like those kinds of things I'm sharing anyways, it's a part of my life. Um, so, and what highlights are you guys, you're going to go to your story. Okay. So you need to, okay. You need to go to our Instagram and you need to click our highlights and you'll know what it is. So I'm going to leave it at that because I think it's important visually for you guys to understand what we're talking about. Um, you save your highlights from your story, okay? But you could create a highlight with photos in your phone, okay? You just, there's a little cross, guys. Create highlight, click, look, play, look at what other people are doing. This is very, very important. Um, I'm gonna speed up a little bit because I really want Ray to have a lot of time. Um, in my story, I already told you guys, uh, VIP customers, they're in my story. That's the first thing I do anyways with the new customers. I make sure, like I ask them, hey, you know, when I do my follow-up text, I don't use AMI, I don't use any of that. Um, you guys have seen my systems. If you haven't watched our recent training, I have a training on the systems me and Justin use. Um, but, and we've shared them with you guys, but um, I do not uh, have a VIP page. I know, it's so weird, it doesn't make sense. Well, I guarantee you these 20 year olds aren't gonna have no Facebook VIP page. They don't even use Facebook, guys. They don't use Facebook. They use Snapchat and they use Instagram. All right, that's it. And TikTok, all right? They're not using uh, Facebook. So that's one thing I decided to do this year on my Instagram was literally rotate everything to one place so I don't get distracted. Um, also on my Instagram, personal product photos, guys. You should be taking, if you really wanna grow your Instagram, you need to start taking the time to take real photos and I don't mean like, oh, like it needs to be like super perfect and whatever, but you need to, like, in my opinion, I have not done good with this. And that's why this fall, I'm really focused in on my personal brand, the story I'm trying to tell before I focus on everybody else, because here's the deal, like your personal brand. And my husband said this today, and it's so key. He was like, your personal brand should be number one. Why? Why does that matter? Right? If since he went away tomorrow, what is your story? right? You're not just Cincy. There are other things to your life that add value to other people. And honestly, 99% of my customers, they connect with me for one of the reasons of whatever I'm sharing in my, you know, story, but then they end up buying the product. That happens a lot. They end up joining or whatever, you know, they can relate with me. They're connecting to you. Um, so, you know, if you're a dog mom, if you're you know, into whatever, you know what I mean? Like, don't go to me and Ray Ray's highlights and be like, oh my gosh, I need to do exactly what they do. I've literally never even looked at Ray Ray's highlights. You know what I mean? Like, I, I really, really want you guys to understand that it's so important for you to be authentic. And we live in a world of consultants and Sensi who literally are just copying the same exact thing over and over and over. And you know what happens when somebody sees something repeatedly, they're going to skip your story because they've seen the why Sensi or the sloth buddy. I saw the same sloth buddy probably a hundred times a day. So at a certain point, somebody's story, I was like, I'm done. I can't even look because I've seen the same buddy. Sorry, y'all love y'all mean it. But like, I'm just being honest with you. Like, talk to me, show me a freaking buddy in your hand. That's what I'm doing tonight with my buddies. Like, Show me what in the hell you're talking about. That's different. What makes you different? What is going to make you stand out? Your face is always going to be the most unique thing about you because nobody is like you. Nobody. You, everybody's DNA is different. Everybody is unique. And I want you guys to really take hold of that. Um, my Instagram is public, just like Ray Ray's. I use Canva and I use the Ogre app. Those are the two apps that I use to create marketing material. They are free. My Instagram is public. That is free. My VIP page, which is my story for my customers, is free. Um, my grid post and my story post, that's free. Do you get what I'm saying? Linktree is free. So this is a free resource for you to grow your network. Um, 
also on my grid and um, Ray Ray emailed me her. So she, we'll be able to like open hers up and show you what we're talking about. Um, but I have my name and then I have world changer. So you can go in and edit your name. So whenever somebody starts typing in your name um, or you tag somebody, if you go to mine, you'll literally start noticing this. It says Chloe Cox world changer because I want them to connect to know that that's, that's what I do, man. Like that's, that's who I am as a person. Like I want to change the entire world. And y'all know that because I've said that for years. So like that's in my, that's on my grid. That's important to me. My link trees on my grid. I use Lightroom to edit my photo colors. It's free. Um, but I do pay for, um, presets. Ray Ray can talk about those. I do think that you need to have a say, the same kind of filter for your photos. Ray Ray taught me that earlier this year. I think that's really important. And if that is over some of y'all's heads, that just means if you're editing a photo, so light room, okay? Ray Ray will elaborate on all the like really good stuff like this because I learned a lot of this from her. Um, but yeah, like I have presets that I bought so I can use that for my brand. Does that make sense? And it's, and I promise you, once you start getting into this and learning, you're gonna have to work. Like free, like the success doesn't come for free, baby. The rent is due every day. So I'm gonna be honest, like you can't just download an app and have it sit on your phone. That's not what we're gonna do. I want you guys to know that what we're saying is investable. You know what I mean? Like there is a, it's a whole, like it's a whole thing. Um, a couple more things. Um, let's see. I use post me to write my grid content. That's free. Ray Ray will talk about that. That's really important. Um, let's see, have a tagline. So also on my grid, you'll see Ray Ray's. I have a tagline on mine. It says, meaning like you can put like a little sentence. You have a certain amount of characters on Instagram for your profile. Um, so mine says specializing in changing lives through fragrance since 2012. That's what I do in one sentence. What are you telling your consumers that you have to offer them one sentence? I don't want to see your website on there. I want to see something else. Um, and then um, another tip. So figure out what, figuring out what your consumers like, but do not conform to what they want, man. If I conform to what my users wanted, half of them want me to train the hell out of them. They want all these things. They want all this. I had so many people message me today saying, oh my gosh, can I get the link to this training tonight? You literally want to know what I said. I was like, no, I'm sorry, but it's for my group. I'll put it on YouTube as I've communicated with y'all on that. I am not a training machine. That is not what I want to be doing on my story. So I, I really want, I think that's like one of the most important things because a lot of influencers I look at and they just look so damn unhappy. You can tell it's like they're literally sharing stuff that their consumers want, but like that's not authentically what they want to share. And I think that's important. If, they, if people don't like what I have to share, then go follow Linda. Like, I don't really know what to say. Like, if you don't like what I have to share, then I'm not going to conform to you. Like, this is my Instagram and I can do whatever I want. You know, and I say that in my story all the time. Um, because I'll get heat sometimes um, for things that I say. And I'm like, guys, I don't care. Like, I literally don't care. This is my story. Um, so I already talked about posting real content. Don't do stock photos unless you can help it, guys. That's why I'm, I, I, the buddy thing just fell into my lap and I love y'all and so many of y'all shared that, but that's a prime example, right? I understand it's coming out tomorrow, but some of you have been sharing the same buddies for the past week, but you're not showing your face. You haven't even talked to me about the buddies. I don't read, so I don't know what you texted on there. I don't know what you put like in your story with that sloth buddy. Do you get what I'm saying? You have to understand that you need to stick out. You must stick out. You must be different. And your face is free, guys. Your face is free. Um, engage with your customers, guys. I do polls on my stories. I do questions. It's not just about Cincy. I'll ask them what they put in their coffee. Um, I ask all kinds of stuff. Whatever I want to ask is what I ask. So that's why I encourage you guys, if you follow us or you can choose, you know, follow whoever you want, but I'm just going to relate to us. Just, I mean, and guys, you don't have to like follow us. Like you don't have to click follow. I mean, look at our stories. You know what I mean? Like I, we're not trying to get you guys to grow our network, by the way, we're just trying to help you learn how to network. Right. And, um, so and realize too, once you start being real, some people aren't going to like it and that's fine. They're not your people. If people start by the way, talking down on you about real content you're sharing they're not your people okay um 
don't just post Cincy. So I've already drilled into that, guys. That's really important. I actually highlighted that. So that means it was a big deal. Um, customers on social connect first and buy second. Why are they connecting with you? How are they connecting with you? Why are, are they going to buy from you if they have they don't have that connection? They don't have that trust. It's very similar with somebody joining, right? It's kind of the same thing. Like they're joining under you because they trust you. Your consumers, like, I don't care how many corporate posts you're going to put up in stock photos or whatever else, or that you are in level three of the incentive. Like, I want to see like more to your life. I want to see like what's going on. You know what I mean? Like, I want to see more than a quote. You're more than a freaking quote. Okay. You're more than a stock photo. Um, and you don't have to be picture perfect guys. Like, I don't know if you follow me and Ray Ray, but in our stories, like we're not like, ready with all the makeup and stuff guys you gotta let that stuff go like you gotta let the body problems go the face problems me and ray ray are big advocates on self-love and self-care because we struggle with that and we know like and i'm sure with ray ray um it's kind of similar like the more you do it and the more you go live and, and do those things the more comfortable you get with it right it gets easier over time um now, some days are harder than others, but with me, like I'm sharing my, my story with, with the world. And like, to me, it's like sharing my story is to me, it's not content because it's my story. Right. So you, you also have to realize that, you know, your customers are looking at your story and you have the ability to throw in the joint opportunity into your story and to throw in um, you know, that they can get paid to club and all the guys, I grew my Cincy club to literally $4,000 this year because I was so focused and intentional with the customers already had because they were already told to go on my story. That's my VIP now for them. So they saw, I did that on purpose because I knew if I could get them on my story, they'd see me unboxing the with box guys. Remember it wasn't available for like three, four months. So I knew if I could get them in my story, seeing these exclusives that they would have FOMO. It's a thing y'all. They want that brick. They want those, they want that always get my bar. They, they want all of that. And guys, I have so much signage now that I've made that y'all haven't even seen with Scentsy Club. Um, and I haven't shared it yet because I want y'all to become more authentic in your business. I'm not going to continue just to share and you guys do the exact same thing. You have to start, everybody has a creative part of their brain. I don't care what you say. And you may not be able to execute it, but you can get someone to execute it. You can get, if you really want something bad enough, you will figure it out. You will figure it out. Um, and so for me, that's really important. Grid content needs to be the best content. I already shared that. Consumers are looking at stories, 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 stories. The story is your interview, okay? Legit. The story is the interview to see if they want to continue to follow things that you have to offer. Um, pick out three things that aren't sensey that make you who you are. Three to five things. I already talked about that, right? Um, for me, home decor, renovations, my kids. Um, working out, you know, things like that are really, really um, important for me to share with people so they know I'm not just like a little wax hustler. I am a person too. Um, and number 10, I already shared this. I drilled into it before I handed over to Ray Ray, but my Instagram story is my VIP page and I can't wait till y'all start doing this because I promise you, if you really tune in and make this a part of your follow-up, you are going to see higher PRV, you're going to, but you also can't say, hey, go to my stories and then you've had a bad week. So you're just not going to share anything. That's what you're not going to do. So if you're going to do something like make your Instagram story, your VIP spot where you drop tips and tricks and products and all that, then you have to show up. Like that's, that's going to crash and burn real quick if they, and, and what's going to happen is they're going to go to Instagram and see my story or Ray Ray's and they're going to see us sharing the joint opportunity or an LTO or something and they're going to buy from us. And that's literally what's going to happen. So I want you guys to make sure if you're going to use your story as your VIP spot to really channel your customers to go to, um, you need to be consistent with that. Um, and the snap and share and referrals and all of those things, guys, that's why I really got tuned into that this year because I knew if they snap and share and guys, we have literally beat that in the face. If you don't know what snap and share stickers are or referral stuff, we have links for all of those on our pages um, with that. So I'm not going to like, I, I'm like, you're going to have to use your search engine on your team page and search snap and share. Um, but 
that there was a whole focus on that guys because with snap and share what y'all don't realize or maybe you do realize but if you did i would think you'd be using it a lot more with your customers when you tell your customer and follow up hey listen when you get that product for me when you get that little prize for me can you please drop it in your story and tag me it would mean a lot to me um they will do it not all of them some customers just suck dude i'm gonna be honest i have some i'm gonna be real that just flat out suck that's the customers man but the 10 percent that rep for you will rep hard for you and you guys will see in my stories i have a couple vip customers they know now everything they get from me they open it because i'm going to take care of them if you have sensi sitting in your house it is not making you any money okay send that bar to that customer that is that is unboxing their stuff in their stories do you know why customers start unboxing their stuff do y'all have any idea why they start doing that because they see you doing it okay they're unboxing what you're sending them because they've seen you do it in your stories. It all matters. It all is like a full circle. Um, and so, yeah. All right, Ray Ray, dear God, <laughs> pass it over to I'm gonna, you. Uh, I'm going to add on to the whole snap and share and referral stickers and whatnot. Cause I saw someone post that they send them out, but only a couple people actually do it. Um, just like Chloe said, not all of your customers are going to do it, but did you know that it takes someone roughly seven times before they actually do something? Seven times. That's a lot. That's a lot of times. So repetition is key. Every single thing that I send out, every single thing, I don't care if it's an order that I personally package that I'm delivering. I don't care if it is a scent circle I'm popping in the mail. This QR code goes up there, okay? Along with my referral sticker on everything, everything. But you also have to do the follow-up, okay? Like Chloe said, hey, when you get your order, I would love for you to tag me on Instagram, on your Instagram story. Just like Chloe has um, her people that are die hard, I already know my customers who I don't even necessarily have to put the sticker on my product anymore. It's just like, it's just going to happen automatically. They know to go to my story and tag me. And that's because they know that I take care of them. So if you're not doing snap and shares and you're not doing referral stickers, like you really need to I promise you it'll change the game of your business. Um, and then the Lightroom app that Chloe was talking about, it's free. You can get presets anywhere. Guys, you can buy presets on Instagram. I'm sure that an influencer you follow has her own presets or his own presets, okay? You can go on Etsy and buy presets. I'm sure you can Google presets and find so many. And guess what? When you buy those presets, it's a tax write-off, okay? So, um, and then the Post Me app. That app is so... It is easier for the consumer, the people following you, to read what you're posting in your grid, okay? Your brain, your brain, it's hard to focus on something when words are jumbled up this, when there's like 20 sentences in this small of a space, okay? That app helps it space it out so it's easier to read. I will tell you for a fact, this was even before I even knew what the Post Me app was, if I was scrolling on social media, let's see if I can find one actually. If I'm scrolling and I see someone post something long that, for example, this, this right here, I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see it, maybe not. Okay, you see that? I know it's probably not that clear. There's no spaces in that. I'm not reading that. It's, it's too much for me to focus on, right? I'm here to see the picture. If the picture gets me and then I look at the caption, there's a bunch of jumbled words in this small space. You just lost me. I'm scrolling on to the next post that actually has, actually has a, where I can read it visibly. This is what the Post Me app does. It separates your sentences so it's easier to read, okay? Why do you think in high school they made you do all of those, um, I don't even remember what they're called. They used to, you guys remember that in high school when you wrote a paper, you had to use a specific format 
It's so the teacher could read it, read it easily. And if you're a teacher, please tell me that that is the truth, okay? You would get points taken off if you didn't use the double space. Okay, just saying. Um, so definitely download that app. I will screenshot the apps and put them on the leadership page after this training or tomorrow. I'm not gonna promise tonight. I will do it tomorrow so you guys can see what exact app is, what the app looks like to be downloaded, okay? Um, so my top 10 tips are, some of them might go off of what Chloe said, um, but I'm just gonna say it again. They're not necessarily buying Sensi from you. They're buying into your brand. They are buying from you because they know, like, and trust you, okay? Whether they've met you in person or not, guys, I just met a customer for the first time today because she, I don't even know really how she found me, but she started buying from me and I specifically asked her if I could put her order in on my end so I could drive and meet her in person so I could build that connection. Vince asks me all the time, hey, can I do drop-offs for you? Yes, you can, honey, but I also like doing drop-offs because that's how I build connections with people. I want them to hear the tone in my voice. I want them to meet me face to face to build those connections, okay? So three things that I'm known for, and I'm sure some of you can probably tell me right off the bat what I'm gonna say, plants. Do you know how many people ask me about plants? Guys, I am not a plant special specialist. I am not a plant expert, okay? Some of the plants in my house, I don't even know the name of. I would literally have to Google what they look like to figure the name out. I am not an expert with plants, but I love them. So I share them and I share my passion for them. I get so many comments and messages asking me, hey, how do I take care of this plant? Hey, what's the best plant to buy? I had a consultant randomly message me yesterday and asked me, hey, what type of plant should I buy? I told her, snake plants and pathos, they are the two easiest plants on the planet, okay? So people know me because I love plants, People know me because of my dogs. I also call them my A crew. I also have three cats, so it's like a zoo up in here. So when I say A crew, I'm referring to everyone in my house, including my husband. Um, but people mostly see my dogs on social media, okay? And that's why I added them into my sticker, into my sticker, because people know that I don't have kids. These are my kids. These are my kids. I don't have human kids. I have dog kids, okay? Animal kids. And then the other thing that I recently got into was um, I've had two campers now. Me and my husband just bought an RV. I've been flipping it. I've been redoing stuff in it. I also like to go on adventures. Me and my husband are always traveling. We love to ride ATVs. We are always, I'm hiking all the time with my dog. So I'm just out and about outside, basically. I get so many things sent to me randomly from people I don't even know, from people I didn't even know that followed me saying, hey, this reminded me of you. So it's not just about Sensi guys, okay? Like I said earlier, there are 235 people up here. We all sell Sensi. Why should they buy from you? That's what I want you to ask yourselves. Why should they buy from you, okay? All right, my number one tip is be consistent. Chloe already said it. You can't just deuce out for a week. You can't just deuce out for a week. You have to show up. Whether you're having a bad day, whether you're having the greatest day of your life, show up. Okay? And it doesn't have to be planned. You don't have to plan out what you're going to share. Maybe on your grid, and you might be able to plan content for that, yes. But on your stories, share what you're feeling. Share what's happening in your, in your life in that moment. Okay? Share how you feel right then and there. You don't have to show the, you don't have to try to pretend and show the world that everything's great in your life. You don't. And that's when you do that, when you show up where you're at currently in your life, that is when people start to really connect with you because they're like, oh, she's human too. Oh, she has bad days. Oh, she cries. Oh, she has anxiety. I didn't know that. Oh, she struggles. Oh, her and her husband are going through, you know, some rough spots and just got into a fight. Whatever it is, that's where the trust starts. When you show up when you don't necessarily want to, okay? So be consistent. The next tip, 
show your face, okay? Show your face, Chloe already said it. You need to show your face and you need to show up on video. Taking a picture of yourself is all great and dandy, but guess what? Video portrays so much more than a picture because they can hear the tone in your voice. They can hear if you're actually passionate about what you're talking about. Guys, how many times have we gotten on Chloe Cox's stories and we can tell if she's feeling spicy or we can tell if she's pissed off or we can tell if she is super excited about something. You can tell by the tone in someone's voice how they are feeling about what they're talking about. And that is important. That is super, super important. So show up on video. I don't care if it's a 15 second video like Chloe said, or if it's six minutes long, whatever. Okay, show up on video, show your face. Stop thinking no one wants to see your face. Guys, everyone wants to see your face. Guess why? Because there's only one of your face. Like, come on, just do it. Just show up. I get that it's weird at first. We all have to start somewhere. Just show your face. Okay, just show it. Show it. All right, next thing. Oh, and show your face. Chloe well, already said it. When you're looking your best and when you're looking, looking your roughest, okay? I can't tell you how many times. <laughs> Well, I can't tell you how many times I've showed up with a greasy nappy head and zits all over my face because I was having a rough week the week before and I devoured every bit of candy in my house, which is what causes me to break out. And I'll be honest, yeah, this is why I look like this with all these mountains on my face because your girl was struggling two days ago, decided to eat all the candy that she bought for her customers, okay? So, show up. Repeat your six. Repeat yourself. Tip three. Repeat yourself like a broken record. Why? Not everybody is on social media at the same time, 24-7, seven days a week. Okay? They're not, they're not up there all the time. So just because you talked about Scentsy Club two days ago doesn't mean Alexa saw it, but she might see it today when you talk about it, right? Scentsy Club, I have been growing my Scentsy Club for the past four months, basically since COVID started. And I'm finally at the point where I'm at $2,000 in Scentsy Club. I don't even have to worry about getting that 30%. Why? Because I repeated myself. The other reason why is because I told the consumer, my customers, why they needed to do it. What was in it for them? The perks is what's in it for them. If you already plan on spending money with me, why don't you sign up for Scentsy Club and get the 10% off and get the half off products? Majority, majority of orders are a minimum of $30. So why don't you sign up? Okay, you can sign up today. You can cancel tomorrow if you want and get that 10% off your order. Save you money, honey, okay? So what's in it for them? Repeat yourself. If a customer texts you and says, hey, I wanna get this, say, why don't you sign up for Scentsy Club? It only makes sense. Almost all of my customers are signed up for Scentsy Club. And talking about repeating yourself, showing your face, and being consistent, Chloe said it earlier, I showed, um, I unboxed all the Christmas stuff, okay? I unboxed all the Christmas stuff two days ago. I received a $200 order from one of my customers. I posted on, I posted saying, hey, thank you so much for your order. She commented and said, the only reason I ordered was because I watched your story and I saw you unboxing your stuff. That's why I went to your link and ordered. That right there tells you what they are watching, okay? Another thing, I showed little bits and pieces when I was doing my Hocus Pocus boxes. I had two of my customers sign up for Scentsy Club. Brand new customers signing up for Scentsy Club. All because they saw me posting about what I do for my club people, okay? so. Repeat yourself. Again, it takes roughly seven times for someone to jump on something after they've heard it for the seventh time, okay? All right, next, create your own content, y'all. Create your own content. When it comes to your brand, it needs to reflect you. So copying, copying and pasting someone else's caption is not okay. Not okay. And adding your own picture to it, your customers are gonna know. And you know what else? That person that just put that caption there, I bet you it took them hours, if not days, to come up with that content. For myself, it literally, guys, first of all, I'm not good with writing, 
I'm gonna put it out there. I'm not good. I'm not a good writer. I've never been a good writer. I've always struggled with it. It takes me a long time to get my thoughts together and to put them down on paper. So when I come up with content, it takes me roughly a week, roughly a week, okay? So create your own content. Create your own content, okay? Um, oh, and why you're creating your own content, I said this earlier, but the first line needs to draw that person in. It needs to capture their attention, okay? Number five, offer value, value to your audience. What are you trying to show them? Chloe said it earlier. What story are you trying to portray? What's your story? It's kind of funny. Um, my account is on public. And recently I got my first, my very first negative comment. Okay, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. I got my very first negative comment. A girl posted on a recent post that I posted to my feed and she said, ew, how did I, how did I end up on an MLM page? I didn't, I didn't react. I deleted it. Actually, I might have kept it there. I'd have to look, but I didn't react. I didn't respond. But my first thought was clearly you connected with me on some level for you to start following me. So now that you see that I am with an L MLM, what, what's the difference? You connected with me on some type of level. Otherwise, you wouldn't have clicked follow. So just want y'all to say that, okay? or to hear that. Um, six, number six, share and reshare what people tag you in. Okay, so for example, if someone takes a picture, you know, you ask them, hey, share what I'm, share what you got on your story. When they share it, I want you to reshare it to your page. Don't just like it, reshare it, okay? I also want you to share other small businesses. If you buy from another small business, let's say, um, I don't know, if you just got your hair done from someone, show that you just got your hair done and retag that person. It is showing your audience that you are supporting small businesses. That is huge right now. Small businesses need that support. And when they see that you're showing it, they're going to return the favor, okay? Um, number seven, show glimpses of how I'm working. I kind of talked about this a little bit ago. This entices your audience to know more. You don't have to show them exactly what you're doing. Give them little bits and pieces. Make it exciting. Get them hype. Like, ooh, what is she doing? I can't tell you how many times I show little bits and pieces of what I'm doing. I get so many people in my DM saying, ooh, what is that? Where did you get that? What is that for? Is that for your customers? Do you have to be a customer to get that? Yada, yada, yada. Okay? You want people in your DMs. Believe it or not, Instagram has an algorithm. Okay? The more people you get into your DMs, the more people you get to comment on your post and you reply back to those DMs and you reply back to those comments, Instagram is going to move you up on their algorithm, which means more people are going to see you. Okay? More people are going to see you. Ray Ray, will you elaborate on this? Because I think this is really important and I don't like think people understand why it is. So can you like help help them understand like how you built this? Because I think a lot of people think, okay, a DM is a direct message, by the way, y'all. I don't think people yeah. understand like how much consistency and time it takes to actually build people wanting to message you about what you're sharing. So yeah, dive into that a little bit because I think they got to understand that part. Okay, so if, if you post something on your grid, okay, your grid is this, in case you guys don't know, which is okay if you don't know. I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to pull it up. Okay, okay. your grid is you post pictures or your feed that's another okay this is your grid okay right here where you see my pictures down here the pretty pictures right the where it looks like I have my life all together pictures that's your grid when you post that and someone comments you need to reply you need to reply this is where it gets time consuming 
this is where it takes the effort to show up, okay? I'm not gonna lie. I get comments sometimes and I'm like, man, I really don't feel like responding. But I do it, I respond, because guess what? It's going to increase, it's going to increase the engagement on your overall feed, on your overall account. Instagram sees that and they're like, oh, she, get, she gets a lot of engagement on her, on her entire account. Let's push her out into the open where more people can find her. That's how influencers become an influencer because they're engaging with their people, okay? Now, same thing. When someone ends up sending you a message, whether it's, who knows, whatever the message is about, respond to them, okay? Don't just respond to them. Voice message them back. Voice message them back, okay? It is huge. Here's, um, this is Chloe's feed too, by the way. So you guys can see we were talking about earlier, your bio and then where your link tree goes. And then all these little circles, these are her um, highlights, okay? So when you post in your story, you can save them to a highlight. Doesn't have to be perfect, y'all, okay? You just have to be willing to sit down and work on it. I mean, I'm literally like, her talking about my bio, I was like, man, you know, I leave from Mexico on Friday, by the way, super excited um, for my birthday, but I'm going to sit on the plane and I'm going to edit this and I'm going to make it more me, okay? Because I want people to go to my profile and be like, oh, almost feel like they kind of know me without knowing me, right? So engagement is the number one thing you have to engage. If you want to put yourself out there, you have to engage with people. That would literally be like you wanting to make friends, but you're not willing to talk to that person. It's the same thing, okay? So put yourself out there. Um, let's see. Number eight was distinguish what should be shared on your feed versus your story. This is very important. If you are going to show a stock image, please do not post that on your feed. That, your feed should be about you, your personal life. Okay, you can, you can incorporate Sensi, but a stock image off the workstation on your feed? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Okay, no stock photos on your feed. Anything on your feed needs to have your face in it. it needs to have your face in it or your kids' faces in it. Something that matters to you. Okay, your family, your friends, your face. So, for example, LTO drops um, or prod drops in general they need to go on your story. Something that's going to be limited time doesn't need to be on your feed forever, okay? Now that's gonna take some time to kind of distinguish. Um, let's see, tips and tricks for need to go on your feed. If you're showing them how to change your wax, put it on your feed and then you can save it to a highlight reel. That way when your customer says, hey, how do I change my wax? You can say, hey, here's my Instagram, check out this reel or this highlight and there you go, easy peasy. I can't tell you how many influencers, influencers I go to and I wanna learn something that you know they talk about all the time. All I have to do is I go to their highlights and anything they ever talked about in, within that specific subject, I can find right there, okay? <coughs> Nine, I already talked about this, but reels, those are huge right now. Um, TikTok's about to go away, I feel like, okay? Because Instagram has it all. You can go live. You can post on your feed. You can post a reel, which is basically a TikTok, okay? You can post on your stories. You, you can basically send Snapchats on Instagram. Instagram is all of those things in one, on one platform, okay? So, um, what a reel is basically is you are making a short video and you basically, you learn how to transfer your content to a short video and you put captions on there, okay? And I think why reels are so important with Instagram is because like I said, engagement is huge. Instagram can see how many times you view a video. They can see how much time you spend on someone else's account. Why? Because the more you spend on that one person's account, the more you see when you go to your own feed. For example, I know this isn't mine. For example, all right, when I go to my Instagram, 
the top people for my stories are people that I look at all the time. Shelby Cook, my sister, Chloe Cox, um, Blair, Lauren, one of my customers, the people who I constantly look at, that's who's going to show up first. Why? Because sen or, sen Instagram sees that you, that's where you're spending most of your time. Okay. So for example, people who I don't necessarily look at their stories, if I scroll all the way to the end, I see, ooh, okay. Well, this person, I don't necessarily see her, so it's not gonna show up at the top of my feed, okay? So <laughs> if you don't know how to do a Reels, y'all, guess what? Google it, because that's what I had to do. When Reels is basically pretty new in the last like two or three months, um, if not, it might not even have been around that long ago, but I was like, what, is, what the heck is a reel? And I literally Googled, what is a reel? And I learned how to make them. Now, I'm still, I'm still trying to get better at that, okay? Because like I said, <laughs> content sometimes is a struggle for me and it takes me a while to figure out like, what, what am I trying to show other people? What, I'm, what story am I trying to tell? But you just have to be willing to go out there yourself and learn what you want to learn, okay? If you want to get better at something, you have to be the one willing to go out there and research it yourself. You can't just wait for me and Chloe to share. Oh, this is how you do a reel. Oh, this is how you do a hyperlink. Y'all, let me just tell you. Katie Lasseter asked me the other day, hey, do you know how to do a hyperlink? And what I thought she meant was literally copying a URL, putting it in a Word document, and pressing enter where it highlights blue. And I was like, yeah, I know how to do that. And then I downloaded Chloe and Justin's forms, and they have hyperlinks in there. And I was like, yeah, I don't know how to do this. So what did I do? I Googled it. And it's probably one of the easiest things I've ever learned how to do. So if you are struggling with something, Google it. And be willing to learn more about it and how to do it, OK? Number 10. Don't be afraid to use Google. Okay, well, I, I didn't realize that was number 10, but Google it if you, if you need, if you want to know more. And don't be afraid to click buttons on your Instagram, okay? You need to be using the polls. You need to be using the GIFs or the GIFs, however you say it. You need to be using the music option. You need to be using um, the stickers. Everything that Instagram offers you, use it. The more you use, the more engagement you get. The more engagement you get, the more Instagram sees that you are basically kicking ass and they're gonna put you out there for the world to see, okay? Um, I do have a couple other tips. Well, one of them is take your profile off private. We already talked about that. That is super, super important, but obviously that is a pers personal preference. Um, and you can actually change your profile to a business profile. Um, when you change your profile to a business profile, just go into the settings of your Instagram app and you can do all of this, okay? It'll show you exactly what to do. It's actually super easy. But when you change it to a business profile, you can actually see what your engagements are for your posts, okay? So for example, I posted this picture the other day. I had 205 likes, right? But I can go and view insights and it tells me how many people saved my post, how many people shared my post to their story, um, and how many profile visits I got from that one post, and how many people it reached, okay? That is super important because that is how you're gonna find, oh, okay, which things that I'm sharing do my consumers like, do my followers like? That way you can, you can figure out, okay, well, this is what I need to start posting more of because that's what they wanna know. Um, another really good thing, you can do a poll and ask people or questions, the question sticker, ask them, hey, what do you wanna see more of? What do you wanna learn more about on my page, okay? They are following you for a reason. Find out why they are following you and your business will bloom, your, your, your account will bloom, okay? Um, one other pro tip is whenever you do post to your feed, Chloe already said it, most people are watching stories, they don't look at your feed, 
So a lot of people aren't seeing what you're posting to your feed. So when you do post it, share it to your story, okay? Share it to your story. You can click on it. It'll give different borders. Um, and a lot of people, I didn't realize people didn't know this, but when you share something to your story, whether it's your personal stuff or someone else's that you're sharing that you feel like is worthy for more people to know, that's why we share it, right? We want more people to see it. Literally, if you see someone do that, just click in the middle of the post and it'll take you to the original post. I found out um, some people messaged me and was like, hey, I don't know how to get to this. I was like, just click in the middle. It'll take you to the original post, okay? But the main thing here is you have to be willing to learn and you have to be willing to go out there and take what you learned and put it into practice, okay? Yeah, that is, that is so good. And like, I also think that y'all need to understand. I know a lot of people are asking questions. We're about to open it up to questions um, that y'all have for us. But I really love the fact that Ray Ray said, like, if you want something, you're going to learn how to get better. And what you have to understand is you are literally an entrepreneur. You may not realize it, because it's a little different than a normal startup. Um, and I know that because I've done other businesses, but you, if you want to get better, you have to actually learn how to do better. Nobody is going to care about your brand as much as you, right? Nobody's going to care about evolving in a certain area. Like I saw somebody on here earlier was like, well, I can't see well, so I can't do Instagram like that. Well, you need to figure out how you can be successful in making it work for you, right? So it's almost like with all the tips that we're giving you guys, like you're right, we're not gonna screen record how to go in and change your um, stuff to entrepreneur or coach. I just switched from coach to entrepreneur because I saw Ray Ray, so I wanna see if my engagement changes. Like it's all about plugging and playing and seeing what's gonna work and seeing what's what's actually going to grow your, your network. But I, um, when I first started trying to grow my Instagram this year, I don't know if Ray Ray has heard this from anybody, but you can buy followers. I don't know if y'all are aware of that. Okay. They're called ghost followers. Yes. Talk about that, please. Yeah. It's garbage guys. Don't ever do it. So a lot of people buy followers. So, um, my husband actually did that like two years ago and he like got 10,000 followers out of nowhere. And I was like, you didn't grow that you bought it. And it took a while for him to be like, yeah, I did to like, see how it would go. But guys, I'm telling you, organic content to me, organic growth is the best kind of growth because you're building a true following. You're building people, you're building a community. It's almost like with Cincy, how you like recruit and like build your culture. You're building your community culture of, of people. You know what I mean? So yeah, I guess, right. Do you have anything else you want to add to it before we open it up for questions? Cause I know they have a lot of questions. Yeah. So, um, if you do have a public account, you're going to get, at least I do, and I'm sure you do too, Chloe, I get so many random accounts asking me, hey, do you want to buy this many followers? Hey, do you want to do this? The reason why people want, well, maybe not the entire reason, but one of the reasons why influencers want followers is because when you reach the 10,000 mark, you have the swipe up option. I'm sure you guys have seen that with some accounts. Yes, I y'all, I have had Cincy consultants tell me to buy followers so I could get the swipe up. There are Cincy consultants that pay to get 10,000 followers so they can get it. So I want to tell you, it's fake, baby. Half, and half of it you see. Sorry, this will be on YouTube. I'm calling them out. It's fake. Don't look at those people and think that's real. It takes time to build that many followers and look at their likes too. If somebody has 14,000 followers, but 50 likes, that is not a true following. I'm just going to throw that out there. That doesn't even make sense. So anyways, that can be really hot because guys, the easy way is not the best way ever. Do it the right way, take the time, do it consistently, and you're going to build true followers that are not going to go away. Like it's so key. Yep. I would rather have one follower than 10,000. If that one was really, you know, one 
what I was sharing, 100%. So do y'all have any questions for us? Do y'all want to ask us any questions? Feel free. We're going to open it up. Um, yeah, any questions that y'all have? All of y'all are saying start over. Stop. We're not making new Instagrams. Calm down, sister. Use your Instagram and just start evolving in it. Change your bio. Move forward. Yeah, I agree. I would keep the one that you already have and just um, brand. Yeah. That would, like, that would literally be like, oh, okay, I haven't worked my business in the last year. Do you, do you think I should go inactive and then come back? No. Yeah. And I use both. So, some of, so somebody asked, do you, uh, should you get away from Facebook and use Instagram? So I gave you guys my story. I kind of told you guys like what I do and um, – like, I don't, I don't use Facebook Messenger, sorry. I literally am one human being and have thousands of messages. Um, I don't love Facebook because there's a friend limit and all that stupid stuff. I literally use that to run my team and my leaders and my directors and above. That, that's what I use Facebook for um, and to put like files and stuff. But um, yeah, I mean, I just share, Ray Ray does the same. You can link your, your Instagram stories to your Facebook. You can Google that to figure out how to do that. It's very simple, but that way it's posting to Instagram and Facebook at the same freaking time. Um, I know some people um, earlier asked if you should link your um, Instagram to your business Facebook page. I don't recommend that because I'm not super consistent on my Facebook business page. Like it's there, I updated it you know, every couple months, but like that's, that's not where my consumers are going. I'm gonna be really honest. They're just not going there. So I don't recommend linking it to your Facebook business page unless you're going to be a boss on your business page. Are you doing videos on your business page? Is that where your unboxings are? Like, help me understand. You're, you know, to me, it's much easier to link it to your personal. It's where your consumer, that's where your customer base already is. Um, yeah, any questions, Ray? Is there any you see? Someone, um, someone asked if they had tips on how to grow a team, um, build relationships. You have to, they have to trust you before they're going to join you. So that's where the being real and authentic comes into play and engaging with them comes into play. Um, I'll, I'll just be honest. I, um, she might be up here, my girl, Lauren. Um, she was one of the first people I had asked to join back three years ago. And we went to school together, but we were never like super close. So we were kind of just like acquaintances or whatnot. Um, and she just recently joined three years in guys, three years in. It took three years for her to take that leap. And it was because she was following me on social media. She was seeing what I was doing. She was seeing that this is a real thing. So that's where the connections come into play. And it's not just your team, it's your customers too. This business is a relationships business. If you are not here to build relationships, you need to find another job. I'm just gonna be honest. You have to build relationships to be successful with this business. And it's not gonna happen overnight. Yeah, 100%. And I know some people are asking about like the tag uh, or the like the, the name I was talking about, guys, you click edit your profile and it's your name. So like when you go to edit your profile on Instagram, like I know you probably can't see this, it's probably whited out. Yeah, it's whited out. Um, but you can see, you may be able to see I have my name and then I have world changer beside it, guys. So that, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Um, if you go to Chastity Robinson is a great example. You click Chastity in a story and it says like anxious mom and something else, right? That's because that's tagged on. Ray, do you not know about that? What? About like what I'm talking about? No, I do know about that. Yeah, yeah. you do? Yeah. 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 So, so that, that's all that that is. Sorry, I was trying to look at these questions. Yeah, guys, listen, these are questions about, let me be very clear. This is about marketing and, and, and growing your brand. This is not about recruiting, coaching, none of that. So uh, does, does anybody have any questions about anything we talked about, um, not repeating anything that we've already said, but some, some content that you guys want that we did not share about growing your growing your following on social media that that's what we're here for sorry love you guys but like this is that we like this is why this is the struggle with a lot of you guys too like that's not what you need to be focused on right now we need to focus on growing your 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 network through social media okay mm -hmm.
Um, so any, any questions about that? It, are you guys excited about, about really taking that plunge and like going all in with, with branding yourself and with becoming your brand? Oh, that's a good question, Ray Ray. Where is it? Elizabeth Mitchell. She said, when working on Instagram stories, do you find people listen or do captions help? You said a lot of people don't read, but what if their volume's off? And that's so 80% of, of their volume is off until they buy into you. I, so yeah, Ray, you want to elaborate? Yeah, so that is a, I'm really glad you asked that question because that is super important. A lot of people are at work when they're watching stories. So short captions are super important. And that's kind of where reels come into play. If you've ever seen a reel, they have short captions, like maybe max four words, okay? Um, so definitely like, for example, if I'm talking about freshen up pup, I'm gonna put in the more, like one phrase, freshen up pup or my dog stink or something like that um, to catch their attention to be like, ooh, if they're interested they'll actually turn the volume on. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. So I'm trying to decipher what is like the most important for what we're talking about right now. Um, Caitlin, let me see. She said hashtags. How do you start talking to people? It's, it's not like that. Yeah, Ray Ray, explain what, what I think y'all are getting a little bit confused. Yeah, you don't necessarily like literally like drop into their dms right then and there you just you know you go to your you go to their profile you look at their story you see if you guys connect like are you meshing with are you vibing with what they're putting out um and then you click follow and then over the next few months if they post anything then you comment you know if you agree like yeah girl i'm totally with you i have anxiety too whatever the case may be and that's where the relationship starts Guys, it is not going to happen overnight. It's not like, ooh, I put a hashtag out. This person just dropped, you know, on my feed. It's not like you just are instantly friends. That's not how it works. Relationships take time. It's just like it's just like face to face relationships. You know, you can tell when you meet someone right off the bat if you're gonna vibe with them or if you're not. It's the same thing with social media. You're just vibing with what they're putting out on their social page. Yeah, and honestly, I want to say too, how many of you on here right now are following us on social media? Because there's a lot of questions, but I really want to know who actually is following our content. It, I'm going to tell you the best secret in the world. Can I tell you what the best artists do? They steal. But you don't steal exactly what someone has. You look at what they're doing and you incorporate the way your life works, the values you have, the vision you're trying to cast. Then you do content for that. But stop complicating a process. You want to know what to title your page? Guess what? I just switched mine to entrepreneur because Ray Ray has it. Guys, stop overcomplicating it. Number one, you got to work, dude. You got to get a work ethic and you got to understand that. It, you are either going to prepare the meal or you're going to just sit at the table and expect to eat. And I'm going to tell you something. It, that's not the way that you actually succeed in life. If you like, we've talked a lot tonight on so many tips and some of y'all are so wrapped up on things that are not the most important thing. I don't care right now if you guys are asking about reels. Have you went live in your story yet? You have to start somewhere. Stop looking at the big picture and just start, right? Just start with reels. I just did mine the other day. Why? I just got that. They don't give that to everybody. It goes out in waves. I don't think a lot of people understand that. Some people were asking me, there's a, a new thing in my story where like you can expand and, and make smaller the text. That was with an update, guys. I figured that out because I clicked it and then I, I was messing with it. So you're like, and they're gonna give you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest, they're gonna give you some of that stuff based off your engagement. They give you what they wanna give you. So let's stop getting so wrapped up on like all of these details. Follow people that are successful on social and look at what they do. Look at who we follow. Guess what, Ray Ray uses hashtags, I don't, okay? Hashtags actually decrease my likes, they decrease my comments. They don't like it when I do hashtags. So you have to figure out what, 
what like is going to work for you and what is going to cause engagement. And guys, like some of y'all are saying, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do that. Guys, you've got to go to your store and you've got to click the actual buttons and you have to read. You yep. have to read. It's and all trial and error. That's yeah. how it is. You're, you're literally just trying something new, seeing if it works for you. If it does, continue it. If it doesn't, find another way. And yeah. we don't, we don't literally plan out what we're going to share. We go by what we're feeling that day. For example, I literally, I went on my story. This was last week. Um, I was in a funk, but I was like, you know, I'm going to pull myself out of this. So I went on my story. I took a little video and I was like, Hey guys, I'm about to change all my wax. And I'm about to clean my diffusers. 10 minutes later, I was on my porch drinking from a bottle of wine. Okay. And I was honest. I showed up right back on my story and I said, that change of plans. This is what I'm doing. I'll come back tomorrow and show y'all how to clean your diffusers. I yeah. have so many people message me and be like, um, you know, just say, you know, thanks for being real. You know, things that you plan on doing don't always happen. How do you plan them to happen? So you just like Chloe said, you guys are thinking too much into it. Just go with the flow. Okay. If you're changing out your wax, video it. If you're watering your plants, video it. If your kid just, I don't know, said some crazy things, video it. Like, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Like, don't overcomplicate the process, guys. But you've got to get started. And you also, you've got to learn. And I, I saw someone earlier on here comment and say, like, yeah, we have to train ourselves. But do you really have to train yourself at this point? Right? Like, you are training yourself. But the content's there for you to learn. It's there. It's literally right there. We live in a world that has every answer at your fingertips, right? Remember when you were younger, it was like Ask Jeeves or Ask whatever. Remember that site? Like Google is like that times a million now. Like you can find the answer. But here is the deal. Y'all are grown adults, right? And you're either going to do it or get off the pot, right? Like this is going to go on YouTube. So I'm going to be PG. But like, yeah, Ask Jeeves, Trinity. Ask Jeeves. And it was like the red box, right? And that's where you went. So it's like, I don't know what's happened, right? But it's like, I think a lot of consultants have gotten to the point where they're just like yeah. waiting, right? They're like waiting. And they're like, maybe next week it's going to happen at that training. No, what's going to make it happen is you getting up and doing something about it. What's going to make it happen is you deciding that you're going to be successful in this business and you're going to do whatever in the hell it takes. Like, that's the, that's the thing. Like, I started watching Ray Ray and I told her that when I started watching her Instagram like two years ago, I was like, oh my God, you're doing all this stuff. The first thing she told me is use every button. If you're not using every button, I don't know what to say to you. You know what I mean? Like you're bro, you're a grown adult, right? I want you guys to think about this. Like y'all are asking about something that is on at your fingertips. You're at like, and I don't want to be ugly about it and I'm going to not be super spicy, but what we have to get to the point of understanding is like, you know, what are you going to do about it? Like you, you're, you just learned in my opinion, the top tips tonight that literally can grow organic content, organic, organic followers, real followers, like real growth. But for some reason, we're still asking about how to book parties in the chat. That is not what this is about. Okay? And I'm not trying to be ugly, but I just want you guys to understand that we've got to get focused. If you want to grow Instagram, focus on Instagram. It's that simple, right? You want to grow booking, just like you want to grow recruiting, booking parties, active frontline, you focus on that. So what I want to really leave you guys with as a, as a challenge um, is to go in your stories. Tomorrow's Thursday. I want you to spend the next seven days consistently sharing in your stories, consistently. And you know, if you want to do it, great. If you choose not to, that's great too. But, you know, you've got to get started to actually get better. Yeah. And if y'all have recommendations, by the way, in the chat right now, of people to follow, please drop it right now. Um, obviously, all of them are awesome. Um, I'm trying to think of some other people. Um, that's really good. That is consistent. But a lot of these people are in our group. So it makes it really hard to go outside of it. Um, but, you know, a lot of us learned from Ray Ray, you guys. All of us did, actually. I know I did. Chastity Robinson would probably never say it, but I know for a fact she watched Ray Ray. Like, that's, 
you've got to look to at this younger generation and you have to look at what they're doing because if they're doing it, that means that that's what consumers are looking at, right? Um, yes, and Nick Gervais is really good. Uh, yep, and, and, but I will say this, just make sure you don't absorb yourself into feeling like you have to be like that person. This is very important. Um, Instagram is a highlight reel, right? It's not sometimes real at all with some people. So I want you guys to make sure when you're following people, don't get so wrapped up. A lot of these people that you guys are following are asking for my content. They're asking for my trainings. And I don't mean that bad, but what I'm saying is I want you guys to really understand that, you know, fake is really easy to do, man. And I want you guys to know that you have like value to add to the world. You have a story, you have a testimony, you have all of those things. That is what an Instagram story is to me. And yeah, you're right, Ray Ray. TikTok is going to go away soon. I hated TikTok mostly because it was endorsed by China. I hate China. Um, and, uh, Reels is operated by Instagram and Facebook. So we know it's going to stay around. That's why I'm doing Reels, y'all. That's why I didn't do TikTok. So, you know, focus on like, you're going to get the vibe when you're following certain people on, okay, this is real content or this is a joke. You know what I mean? Like eventually you'll get that vibe. So be very careful on what you allow into um, your branding and what you allow into your, um, like just your business, I guess in general is what I'm trying to say. And that's really all I have to add. Ray, do you want to close it out real quick? Um, I'm 100% with you. Not everything on social media is, you know, their life. Obviously, we can't share our entire 24 hours a day. No one can do that, okay? And if you can, I mean, I don't even know what to say. But when you're following someone, literally follow them to get value from what they're saying. Do not compare yourself because guess what? We are all on our own journey. Okay. I can't compare myself to Chloe. She's been doing this for almost seven years, right? Almost seven years. Yeah. Eight. 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 Jeez. Eight. Eight years. Okay. We are on two completely different paths and that's the beauty of life and being able to share it on social media. So if you, it went when or if you ever start feeling that you are in the comparison game with someone you're following on social media, you need to unfollow them. You need to yep. unfollow them. And, that, and look, that's exactly what I do, Ray Ray. And I know there's consultants, there's probably especially high up leaders in the company and they go, damn, Chloe, stop following me. Yeah, because you rubbed me the wrong way. And I don't, I don't like that. Like, you know what I mean? Like you have to protect what you see, man. And you got to protect what's in front of your face. And when you start feeling comparison or start getting, feeling some kind of way, you got to get back in your lane and getting back in my lane is blocking and blessing somebody by. I know that some people don't believe in that, but I'm a firm believer. If somebody's up in my space, they're, they're killing my vibe and like, whatever you're like, you have to stay in your lane because comparison is just the worst. And that's why, honestly, I don't even, I don't look at a lot of people's feeds. I'm just focused on, on, on my, on what I need to share and like, literally what I'm doing. And I know Ray Ray's the same. So yeah, block and bless them guys. Like in my opinion, I don't have time for it. I don't care about this petty stuff. There's a lot of women out there, men out there, and it's just not real. And, and I'm telling you, the more real you become and the more vulnerable you become to your community through Instagram specifically, because I'm a firm, I'm a firm believer that I don't think Facebook's going to be around that much longer. And that's probably hard for some of y'all to hear, but I just, I think there's a lot of stuff changing with it. You just don't really know what can happen. Right. And the next generation, they don't have Facebook. You have to understand this. My assistants are 20 years old. They don't have Facebook. It's not a thing. You're, you have to evolve or, you know, you're going to struggle. So yeah, we love you guys. Ray, want to say later? Bye. Hi guys, thank you for joining us. I'm going to stop the recording.